toujours pleure toujours dans ce pays qui les a adoptés. Alors, continuez. Ok. En fait, euh, j'avais fait un stage comme aide enseignante dans une école communautaire euh, francophone. Ça s'appelle Ibn Battuta. C'est une école islamique, en fait. Et ce que j'avais ré euh, remarqué durant mon stage, que cette, cette école n'avait aucun ressource et que les ressources dont ils avaient ne venaient juste que bien fait de la communauté. Donc, ma question consiste à, euh, à vous trois, en fait, si, euh, qu'est-ce que vous proposez comme aide aux gens, à ces hommes de écoles islamiques, en fait, euh, dont certains parents ont choisi que leurs enfants font leur formation là-bas, quel est votre programme, en fait, à chacun de vous Quelle aide proposez-vous Et si vous l'avez fait, euh, si vous avez déjà pensé, quelles sont les aides Et si vous ne l'avez pas, quelles qu sont quel est donc euh, les ressources disponibles dans votre agenda Merci. Okay, thank you for your question. So she's just asking. Um, she actually um, did sort of like I guess like, like a co-op almost term um, as a, as a teacher at Ibn Battuta, which is um, a francophone Islamic school. It's a private school. Um, and what she noticed is that you know pretty much the school is entirely funded by um, community resources. So her question was, um, you know, what supports are there for private religious schools in Ontario? Um, you know, if there can't be direct funding, is there any other supports, um, particularly for the parents of the children who are sending their children to private religious schools? And I'm actually just going to add one point, sort of actually related to Alex's point about the cultural differences. One of the realities we've seen in our community is that at the private religious schools, the Ikweo tests are high. So the Ikweo is, is actually, I would argue, not the issue. Um, and it's the cultural religious differences is not the issue. Um, so, and that's actually one reason why some people in our community, even though they don't have the resources, are putting their kids into private religious school because they're actually finding that they're doing academically better, um, even by provincial standards, than in uh, the public school system. So the first first spot will be Wale Farah. Uh, thank you. Um, first of all, I just want to congratulate the Muslim community in Ottawa, especially Ibn the Batuta is in my writing, like the writing that I want to represent. And, and I think it shows uh, immigrants when they come to this country, their creativity, their initiative, and how much you know energy and, and effort they want to put in to make our uh, country better. Uh, so because I see the Islamic schools and other schools that are privately run, you know, create uh, creativity and also some uh, added, added, added value to, to our society. Uh, uh, okay, so in terms of, uh, uh, yeah, it's obvious, you know, the private schools, especially Islamic schools, are not publicly funded. Um, and uh, and it's not in, I, I don't know that it's in any party's platform, platform now to, to do that, uh, including the NDP party. But what I can do, uh, as if I'm elected as a representative, since Ibn Batuta and the other Islamic schools, uh, uh, which is close by to the next riding, uh, what I will do is, uh, I will be your advocate. I will be, you know, speaking on your behalf and going, uh, I'm going to knock every door to make sure that we get the resources that you need in your schools. So, for example, uh, if you leave the question of funding which is more directed at public uh, schools, if you leave Catholic that schools. Uh, at, the, at the Catholic schools, because the Catholic schools are kind of uh, public schools, uh, because they, they are enshrined in the Education Act. So, uh, and, and they, they came uh, to exist a long, long time ago. And I applaud the, the Catholic uh, community for doing this a long time ago. And I think I don't see any reason why this will not happen for all religions and all uh, denominations uh, uh, in the future. Uh, but it, uh, we, we need to uh, uh, garner wider uh, kind of a consensus from our society to achieve that. But in the next four years, an individual government with me part of it, what we're going to do is we're going to bring resources that uh, you can now get it. Like we can get resources, for example, issues related with health, recreation, sports for your schools, settlement services, there's settlement funding, so why not uh, have settlement services in your school? Because it's, uh, the, the school, uh, for example, the Tuta is the hub of the community, of the, especially the Muslim community. So why not have these services in that school to help parents uh, learn new language, 
uh, you know, learn how to communicate with their, with their uh, uh, of, uh, I mean, schools and participate. Uh, so, so there are things that we can do now that will actually add value to your schools. And, and that's what I can promise as your, uh, or inshallah I can do uh, if I'm elected. And, and, but most of all, uh, I mean, the most important thing is I'm going to be your advocate for, to address all the issues that you bring forward. Thank you. Next respondent would be Yasser Yankabi. Thank you very much for, uh, for asking that question. And, and as you noted that uh, there is no public funding uh, for privately funded schools. Uh, there is, I know, a, a robust uh, relationship that exists between uh, the Ministry of Education and private schools because private schools are required to follow the curriculum uh, of the provincial government. Uh, so resources in that regard are provided uh, from the Ministry of Education to private schools so they know what the curriculum is and the proper training associated uh, with that. What my focus has been over the last four years, and I do attend a lot of the private schools like the Auto Islamic School and others and speak to students, is to make sure again that we have pro appropriate programming uh, for our young people. That's something that I have focused to, uh, to uh, devote my time and attention to. We know that we cannot have public funding going into private schools, but we have the, the students in those schools are members of the community. So there are other ways we can ensure that they have services available like after school programming through, uh, uh, through community centers, uh, through the funding that goes to Boys and Girls Club and other programs like that so that uh, those resources are very much available to the students uh, who attend private schools. So I will continue my work in that, especially in my community uh, that I work with. Uh, Jaku Combat is a great example of an organization in our community that deals with uh, African Canadian youth and offer a lot of after school programming uh, and government funds them, uh, uh, helps them. They do a lot of their own fundraising, but government also provide a lot of funding uh, through various mechanisms to ensure that they have summer programming and after school programming. And I think those are great ways that we can work with other not-for-profit organizations to ensure that our youth have resources outside the classroom as well. Next response will be Alex Hill. Um, I think this is at least one instance when we're all on the same page. It's obvious that you can't allocate public monies to private schools, but what we can do, again, is empower principals, teachers, to make the choices that they feel are best for their students. We can offer parents and taxpayers more choice when it comes to schooling. Um, the Afrocentric schools in Toronto were one instance of members of the community at the municipal or local level deciding that they wanted to approach education in a bit of a different fashion and they're still public schools and to the best of my knowledge they're still open to students from diverse backgrounds but they do provide uh, new Canadians, uh, other Canadians from minority groups an opportunity to learn in a way that's more suited uh, to their culture and their approach to knowledge and learning. Um, so I think that that's essentially it. I think it's also important to know, uh, as Yasser said, that education doesn't stop at the classroom. And through uh, supporting community culture, through supporting our community centers and community programming, uh, we can also help foster a strong sense of uh, both Canadian identity and also ethnic and religious identity.